Hello and welcome to another episode of Doug Formative. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you just the basics on how to use Inkscape. If you've never used Inkscape before, it's a great free program that allows you to create really high quality vector images or just a graphic design in general. I'm going to post a link in the description down below so you can get a free copy of Inkscape for yourself so you can follow along with my tutorials. Now, when you first open up Inkscape, you can set up your page however you want. Some people don't like to have this this paper in the middle of the screen here and you can get rid of that by going to file, document properties, and under the page tab here where it says border, you can uncheck that box. I personally like to leave it up because it gives me a reference on how big the design that I'm doing remains because if it gets too big then the file size is huge and can be hard to work with and sometimes the program will freeze up depending on how good your computer is uh, so I'm just gonna leave it there uh, also if you want to change the background color you can by clicking on the box next to background color and you can have a black background if you want to or anywhere in between uh, I'm just gonna leave it white for now if you notice some of the other tabs on here the only other one that you'd really be uh, dealing with is uh, grids you can create a grid in the background that will allow you to create uh, perfectly lined up shapes uh, and I'll show you in a little bit how to do that but there's uh, three things that I wanted to focus on today um, first one is going to be how to create shapes and uh, work with a color and outline uh, number two is I want to show you how two shapes can interact with one another so you can create uh, uh, differences between the two uh, using the overlap and then the third one, I'm going to use a grid to create a digital number. And those three things will just kind of give you an idea of how some of the tools work in this program. So let's go ahead and get started. If you want the page there, but move it out of the way, if you're on a desktop, you can click in on the mouse wheel and then just drag it over to the side. Now let's go ahead and make a perfectly shaped square by using the rectangles and squares tool over here. Now hold control, click and drag to the right at a 45 degree angle. But the opacity was all the way down for some reason so let's bring the opacity back up. Now sometimes when mistakes happen it's a good thing so you can uh, see how to correct them instead of uh, panicking and thinking there's something wrong with the program. So I think that's an actual good thing that happened. Uh, so don't panic if you draw a shape and it's not showing up on the page. Just look at your menu over here to the right and take a look at what might be going on. So in that case, the opacity was dropped all the way down to zero. So we brought it back up to 100. Now, if you notice, the square is already filled in. It's not like those other programs where you have to create a shape and then use like the paint bucket tool to fill it in. Uh, this paint bucket tool functions completely differently. I've never had to use it before, so I'm not even sure what it does. Uh, you know, it's never affected any of the designs that I've done. Uh, so I kind of like the fact that it's already a solid color. Now, if you don't want the square to be black, you can come down here and click on any other color in this palette. Uh, let's just make it teal. If you wanted a different shade of teal, you can come over here and adjust the darkness and lightness. Uh, you know with this menu and if you wanted to make it a gradient you have that option as well I don't want to get too much into gradients on this tutorial I just want to stick to the basics so let's keep it a flat color for now now if you wanted to put an outline on the outside of this square just hold shift and click on any other color that you want uh, we're just gonna do gray so hold shift click on gray and gives it a gray outline now also in this fill and stroke menu you have two other tabs you have the stroke paint which is going to affect just the color of the border that you created so you can slide this back and forth and you see the the outline is being affected but not the inner color and uh, stroke style you can change the style of the outline maybe you want to give it rounded edges you click on round join and it gives you a rounded edge. Let me zoom in so you can uh, see a little bit better. You got a rounded border. So you, you know you got quite a bit of options to mess around with uh, with just basic things like that. Now for what I want to do I don't need a border. 
on this object. So I'm going to click back on the miter join so it gives it the uh, squared off corners because I'll show you what that does later on. Now, in order to get rid of the border, you're going to want to go down here, go back to our selector tool, and you can access a lot of these tools with different letters on the keyboard. Um, like G gives you your gradient tool, D gives you your eyedropper tool, uh, S gives you your selector tool, B gives you your bezier pen. Uh, so there's a lot of cool uh, keyboard shortcuts that just speeds up this whole process. But right now we need our selector tool, so I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. You see our square is selected, and in order to get rid of the outline, this X over here, you're going to hold shift and then click on that X, and that gets rid of the outline on the square. So what I want to do is I want to make it look like there is a bite taken out of this side of the square, uh, like the Apple logo. How we're going to do that is we need to create a perfect circle. So click our circle tool over here, and then like we did with the square, we're going to hold control, click, and drag at a 45 degree angle to create that perfect circle. And that's about a good size. We want it to be a little bit smaller than this square. and. Uh, Let's make it a different color. So let's come down here and make it uh, blue. Actually, no, let's make it red. And in order for these two objects to interact with one another, we need to make them into paths. I don't understand why, but that's how this program was designed. And you kind of get used to that after a while. So with the circle selected, we have to go up here to path and click object to path. Do the same thing with the square. Click on the square, click on path object to path and that will allow us to create differences between these two. Now in order to see where the overlap point is we want to drop down the opacity for both of these shapes. So the square is selected, let's go back to the fill tab and then go down here and click about halfway down on the opacity. Same thing with the circle and that way when you have them overlapped you can see where they're overlapping and just get a better idea of where you want the objects to be. Now, with these overlapped, you know, that's good right about there, but you want it to be centered perfectly on the square. We can do that by holding shift and clicking square. So both of the objects are selected now. And under the align and distribute menu, you're going to want to click on this one right here, this center on horizontal axis. And there's a lot of other great tools in this Align and Distribute menu that lets you line up objects exactly the way that you would want them. And uh, I'm not going to get too much into that. I'll probably do another video just on aligning and distribute. <laughs> um, so that's good. And you know that the circle is perfectly centered on the square now. In order to make it look like it's taken a chunk out of this, you're going to want to go to Path, Difference. Now because we created the circle second, that's why the circle took the chunk out of the square. If the square was on top of the circle, it would be the other way around. So that's why you create the circle second. Now, what if you wanted to do the same thing on the other side? Let's undo what we just did by holding control and hitting the letter Z, which is our magic undo key combination on almost every program that I can think of. Um, so we're going to need to create another circle the exact same size and we can do that by clicking on the circle holding control and hitting the letter D and that gives you an exact copy of that circle. Now hold control and then click that circle and drag it over to the left. Why do we have to hold control? Because it keeps it on the same horizontal line as the other object that we duplicated and try to get this as close uh, as the other one and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect when you're doing this part because what we're going to do is make them both aligned exactly where we want them to be. Now, in order to do that, we want to create a union with these two circles. So hold shift and click on the other circle and go up to path and click on union. And now, anything that we do to the one circle is going, going to affect the other because it thinks that it's the same object. So if I change the color of it, it will affect both of them. 
we'll just keep it orange because it's easier on the eyes. I don't like yellow. Uh, but now, because these are both one object, we can center both of these on the square so we know that they're perfectly aligned before we move on to the next step. So the circles are already selected. Hold Shift, click on the square. And now we want to center them on the vertical axis. So click on that button and now they're perfectly centered. They were already centered horizontally, now they're, they're uh, centered vertically as well. And since everything's already selected, we can do what we did before by going to Path and clicking Difference, and there we go. It took a chunk out of both sides of that object. Now say you want to bring back that outline that we had before. We can do that same thing we did before by holding Shift and clicking on a color for the outline. That gives you an outline on any shape that you have created and you can go over here and change the color darkness lightness or whatever you want to do um, you know so you have that as an option so we are done with this shape now what I want to show you is how to create a grid so we can actually get rid of this shape so let's create a grid by bringing back our document properties and with the grids tab selected we want a rectangular grid you only have two options under the grid menu rectangular or axonometric but for this sake we're only going to use the rectangular grid uh, now we want to click on new and this grid is pretty small but I think it might work for what we're going to do uh, over here you can affect the spacing uh, let's let's just change it just so you can see what what uh, what it looks like when you adjust the size so for spacing let's just do five and five and it just makes the grid a little bit bigger but nothing crazy now we can close out of this menu and we can see that our page is still here and now what I want to show you is how to make like a digital looking number and uh, then we can talk about how these snapping tools work. You know, the snapping tools allow you to click perfectly on a corner or an intersection uh, of an object to make sure that things line up exactly the way that you want them to. Now, in order to create this digital number, we're going to use the Bezier pen, which is going to be your new best friend. Now, you can use it by going over here and clicking on the tool or hitting the letter B on the keyboard will give you that Bezier pen. Now let's zoom in so we can get a better idea of what we're working with. If you zoom in too far, it's going to give you an additional grid. I don't want that because it's, it's just going to be too much to look at. So this is perfect right here. And we're going to make ours three wide by five tall. And that kind of gives you a good ratio to use. Now let's start by clicking on the top left corner and drag this over and you notice once you get to an intersection point, it, it automatically will put the next point wherever you click as long as it's within a certain vicinity of that intersection. So now we're going to bring this down five lines. Go back over. I'm sorry. So we're going to bring this down three points, then in two, down one, over, and we're going to make our digital number two. And then once you click back on this last one, you want to make sure that that box is red because that completes the object that you're creating with the Bezier pen. And you can see that it's created an object because it'll give you that dark outline like that. Now let's just make the number 2018. Uh, so you can get an idea of how to make the other numbers. So let's start with the left corner, go over three, down five, over three, and then click on that red box. And now we need to make the center of the zero by going here. And once again, make sure that that box is red before you click again. The, uh, the one is only going to be one grid wide whatever you want to call that because if you try to make a one three wide it'll just look like another zero and that won't make sense and then for the eight we're just gonna make 
what we did with the zero, but then create the two openings inside of the eight here by doing that. Okay, now what I need to show you is that those the paths that were created inside of the zero and the eight, they're gonna be created just like their objects. So if we click on our selector tool and then we choose a color, let's just choose uh, blue. I'm sorry, we have to select everything. Select everything and click blue and you'll see that it filled in the middle of the eight and the zero because it thinks that those are objects and not dead space. It doesn't know the difference. So how we can tell tell them that it's dead space is we need to get rid of them. So unselect everything just by clicking off to the side. Click on that middle object, hold shift, and uh, click on the outside of the zero, and then go to path, difference. And there's two ways that we can do the eight. You can do these individually, or if you want to do them at the same time, there's another step that you would have to do. And I'll show you just so, you know, if this situation ever comes up, you know how to do the difference of multiple objects at one time. So in order to do that, you'd have to combine these two objects into one by clicking on one, holding shift, clicking on the other, going to path, and then clicking union. And now it thinks that these are one object. Now we can click on the outside of the eight, go to the path, and clicking difference, and then that gets rid of the center of the eight. So now you have a digital looking 2018. So that's all the stuff that I wanted to show you on this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. And uh, leave me in the comments any ideas of something else that you would want to learn how to do. Uh, whether it be a specific logo design or another tool that maybe you're having trouble with. Um, I'm going to continue posting videos on Inkscape because it's fun for me and I really enjoy showing people how to use this program. So take care and I will see you guys in my next video.